to the UIAAA Connection podcast. GoFan and VNN are proud to be the exclusive sponsor of the UIAAA Connection. Now a combined company, GoFan and VNN provide a seamless integration for digital ticketing and athletic websites. Direct your fans to one place for all your athletic events, communications, and tickets to home and away games. Thank you to GoFan and VNN for their exclusive sponsorship of the UIAAA Connection. Welcome back to another edition of the UIAAA Connection. I'm your host, Mark Hutch Hunter. Today we have as our special guest, Karen Soper, the principal at Manti High School in Manti, Utah. Karen, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Let's have you begin by sharing with our audience here in Utah, across the nation and around the world, a little bit about you, talk about where you grew up, where you went to school, your first job, etc. Okay. Yeah, you bet. So I was born in Tooele, Utah, and I lived there till I was about three. And um, my parents moved to Provo, and then they were divorced, and we moved to Salt Lake. And then um, we moved right to the center of the city, right by Liberty Park. So I attended South High School and Whittier Elementary, and it bust us out to Glendale Intermediate. So it was a, it was a good place to live. Um, South was a great school. It was a smaller school, it was a 3A school that they ended up closing because the area that I grew up in was getting older. It was an older older generation. So anyway, so let, they me ask you this, let, let me ask you this about South because in my early days at Jordan, South and Jordan were in the same league. Yes. Before they closed. So when did you graduate from South? In 1981. Oh my goodness. So I would have been at Jordan for two years then. So that dates me. Yeah. And me as well. <laughs> yeah. We played Woods Cross and Bear River and all those mm -hmm. and Judge and Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I didn't mean to uh, to interrupt, continue. Oh yeah. So anyway, so I after I graduated from high school, I promised myself I would never go back into education. I was gonna go do hair and my dad he was one of my mentors said to me, um, you know, let's just have you go down to St. George to school. And I think he was trying to get me away from the boy. Anyway, I went to Dixie, went to Dixie College for two years. Loved it, loved my roommates. And my first group of roommates I had, they were, every one of them was going to be a school teacher, every single one of them. And so they said, oh, you got to come to the classes with us. And I ended up, oh, yeah, that's pretty good. So I ended up really liking it. So I Finished my schooling two years at Dixie and then went to SUU. Back then it was Southern Utah University. But no, no, it was SUSC. It was SUSC back in the day. So I went to SUSC and graduated with an elementary degree with a child, child, early childhood minor. And then jumped right out of school and started teaching. My first job was at Granite School District at Plymouth Elementary, teaching fourth grade. And I was in, uh, I taught school in elementary for, gosh, 25 years, maybe. And then we went to Idaho and taught eight years in Idaho and Blackfoot, Idaho. My husband is from Panguitch, so we decided we wanted to come back to Utah. And Manti was right in between two hours to Salt Lake and two hours to Panguitch. So we found a job here in, in uh, Manti and I had that job opening. So I started teaching at Manti Elementary. And then I became the literacy coach for Manti Elementary, then the literacy coach for the district. And while I was doing that, the superintendent said, you know, you ought to go get your master's in administration, never having administration on my radar, ever. I, I would love to be a classroom teacher. I loved elementary. So he said, it might help you with your um, literacy coaching in the district level. So I said, okay. So as soon as I finished my degree, they appointed me the principal at Manti Elementary when Barbara Lyson, who was my mentor, retired. So I was the elementary principal at Manti Elementary for about 10 years. And then the district asked me if I'd be interested in going to the high school. And that, that was never on my radar. I mean, I'm always an elementary person and they're bigger than me. And, but, you know, I thought, yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's give it a shot. And I have absolutely loved it. It has, it has been a good change. I've loved, I loved the students. I love the challenge of of all the activities and all the um, involvement of, and, and the opportunity for student leadership. I love that. There were so many opportunities at the high school level 
for students to lead. We just got to step out of their way. And it's it's been a, a fun, fun transition. I don't want to retire now. And I like, this is my 40th year in education. This was beginning my 40th year. So I, I'm not ready to retire. I'm having too much fun. So <laughs> Hmm. that's a good problem to have, I guess, maybe until they boot me out. But anyway, that's been my journey. Let's talk about, uh, so when you were younger, did you participate in uh, youth sports at all? Did you play anything at, uh, when you were at South? Uh I played softball and when I was younger and I didn't try out for softball when I went to South. I don't know why, but I did play volleyball. I was a volleyball player for four years and then I was a cheerleader and a volleyball player at the same time, which was, a trick uh-huh. that was just my senior year but my brothers were all involved in sports it's always been and I'm I am a one girl and two boys in my family so I was raised with sports watched all the football games we, I mean I played football I was quarterback when my brothers wanted to play football outside so it's been just a part of me and I love it so much that is great let's talk about the mentors uh coaches teachers that had a effect on you obviously you already mentioned your dad maybe mentioned some other ones yeah um barbara lyson my elementary principal you know in all of my years this is very interesting stat in all my years of teaching in all 39 i have never had a male principal as a as a boss i've had a woman principal my entire career (laughs) including myself (laughs) so you know so my mentor have been women you know women in they, that we can do these hard things and we can lead. And Barbara Lyson it was one of my most, um, probably most impactful. You know, she was one that helped me to understand that you can solve problems. I mean, her biggest saying was, say what you mean, mean what you say, but don't be mean when you say it. And that's mm. such a good mantra for me to have those connections with people and, and know that you can lead without being micromanaging and you can lead without being you know mean or or ignorant to people so and that was one of her mantras and I love that so she was a bit she's been a mentor to me um my dad very much so he could see in me what I didn't see in myself and I think that all mentors that are good mentors can do that they see your potential and they help you see it on your own and see it for yourself so it's been it's been good excellent thanks for sharing that let me ask you a little bit of a personal question here, Karen. What's your biggest failure or disappointment in life, and what did you learn from it? Wow. <laughs> um, so when I was at SUSC, and I think this was a, a turning point for me as far as engagement in what I'm trying to do and what I'm trying to, to uh, I guess, overcome. But when I was at SUSC, I was my senior year, I was a student body officer. I don't know. I was the... I was in charge of advertising. I was an advertisement person. And so I I thought I did a great job, but I was called in from the president to to let me know that they were considering pulling my scholarship because they felt like I wasn't fulfilling my responsibilities. And wow, that was the first eye-opening moment to me that went, okay, so how I see things is is different than how other people see things. That quadrant kind of a thing. And I thought I was doing everything I should. And I wasn't communicating. I wasn't following through and asking if there was more work that needed to be needed. So I was making the posters and I was putting up advertisements, but they felt like it wasn't enough and they weren't, we weren't getting enough people out because they didn't see what was going on. Hmm. So that to me, I was so embarrassed. I was so, I thought I never want to feel this way again. So I think that was a turning point for me is when I'm involved in things, I want to make sure that I'm all in that I'm asking questions, what am I missing? You know, and, and I've taken that through every job that I've ever had is, please tell me what I'm missing. Is this what you're looking for? I need more feedback. You know, if you think this is gonna cover it. So instead of just relying on me, I, it, I figured out that it's a team It's a team effort, that it's a strength to ask for help, not a weakness. So that that's really that. I, I still remember that feeling of like, oh my God. I'm going to lose my scholarship, you know, and, mm. and I was like, first took it very personal thinking, what are you guys criticizing my work? But I had to really dig deep and say, oh, wow, I'm not the expectation. And maybe it was some on their side too, that the expectation wasn't given to me clear enough, but I definitely took it upon myself to 
be better to do sure. better. Thanks for sharing that. Let me let me ask a follow up. You talked about all your years in the elementary school. Uh, well, let me see, eight years up at Blackfoot Elementary in Salt Lake, then down to Manti. My question to you is when you become principal at Manti and you had spent all that time at the K through six level, what kind of an, I don't know if this is the right question, what kind of an eye opener was it? What kind of people did you have to lean on? Because most principals that have been on at least this podcast uh, spent their time in secondary, taught in secondary, they were around it. But to, to have someone with an elementary background and to, to be as successful as you've become, I'm just wondering how that happened and uh, share with our audience. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Well, I, I asked myself the very same thing. How is this going to transition? And I think a leader is a leader. I think you have to build the my first year here, I spent the time getting to know teachers, building trust, not changing anything, just kind of watching and, and asking them for help, and then slowly making changes, but making sure that they had a voice, that they had a seat at the table to make sure that what I'm, I understand leadership, I don't understand secondary curriculum, I don't understand the changing of the classes, the activities, the extra activities, the responsibilities on high school teachers that are different than elementary teachers. And so I really relied on them and I relied on the office staff. And I asked a lot of mentor principals, you know, in secondary, went to a lot of meetings um, and just kind of got some feedback that way. And honestly, you learn by making mistakes. You know, like, oh, I'll not do that again. And you only have to own it to fix it. I think if you are honest with, with your faculty and your staff and you say, you know what, I'm so sorry. I, I saw it this way, but it didn't come out the way that I wanted it to. And I, I believe that when they felt like that they could trust me and I had best interests in mind, that I really was doing what's best for students, that leadership is leadership. And I trust them to be professional. I don't micromanage them, you know, and I, I try and build their capacity and I made it clear to all of them that my job is to clear the path for you so that you can work your magic. So I need to do that. And so please communicate with me what you, your needs are and not jump to conclusions. And, and that's a hard, communication's hard. There's a lot of assumptions that go on and that habit number five, seek first to understand, listen before mm -hmm. you talk. You know, that's a, that's a tough one for all of us. And that's, but it's one that I think helps us function as a, as a school and as a, as a community. That is some great insight. I love the, uh, I love your statement. Leadership is leadership, and I love that that you don't micromanage your people. It had to have been a little bit of the difference for you in an elementary school. The principal maybe has four nights a year when yeah. you're back at the school, and at a place like Manti, in January, it could be four nights in one week. Yes. Depending on what the schedule is. So tell me, uh, tell me how you got used to that. I have one assistant principal and at the I mean, it's just he and I, and then we have, of course, Susan or AD. Right. We really had to communication like Monday mornings. We talked about, okay, because we want, he, he has a young family, he has a young family. And of course I'm an empty nester. So I didn't want to take time away from his family as much as I could, but I also couldn't take the burden on for myself. And so we would just sit down and, and then, of course, our SRO was part of that. He would also take some. But we'd figure out who was going to cover what and then just tell my husband to come to the games with me or, you know, just. But honestly, I love it so much. I really try to engage with our rowdy crowd and with, with the students and, and make it a fun opportunity for everybody to make sure it was positive and we had good sportsmanship, but also work closely with their, our families and spectators to make sure that they felt welcome. And, and it was, it was a fun, I'm a visitor, I'm a people person. So to me, it was just one more way to, to enjoy my capacity here, but def, definitely different, especially at the elementary where elementary teachers work so hard during the day and that they're just tired at the end of the day. And so not a lot of stuff happens at night. So anything that happened at night, I would usually stay at the elementary so that, you know, unless it required teachers to be there, but Right. But it's, but it's been a fun transition. I can't tell you how much, how, I mean, it's busy, 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 especially during basketball when you have girls basketball and boys basketball going on. And 
you know, it's, but it's, it's fun and it's doable, definitely doable. You just have to look at it positively and it, it's great for kids. It's what makes high school fun. And you're a Manti, and uh, I'm not speaking out of turn here, but Manti has a rich, rich athletic history. A very successful school in, in athletics. Uh, Wilbur Braithwaite, obviously a legend in the state of Utah, long before you were not, I were around. But talk about that uniqueness that's, because Manti is not a small town, but it's not a huge town either. And it's very... Uh, you know, being the principal there must be fulfilling. I can see the smile on your face, but is is that tough sometimes? Because there there's, could be a lot of community pressure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, you know, and it bottom line, parents want their children to be happy. And so when they come home from school and they're sad about practice or it's not being played enough and that pressure of, okay, we need to change coaches. And it's real. It's a real pressure. And in small town, especially, I mean, I think every school gets it, but we know each other. I mean, we know, and we're like, we need to change. And they want to come talk to you the minute that I was hired as principal my first year. I, it, people came out of the woodwork thinking, that, okay, new principal, new change. And, you know, mm -hmm. you have to, you have to support those hardworking coaches and the time they put into that. And so comes back down to communication. You have to listen as parents come in, listen to their complaints. And I really encourage them to, you know, your children come home and vent. It's pretty much what they're doing. They're venting. And please, it's it's just much easier if you don't try and solve their problem for them, but let them work it out. It's a lifelong skill. And so it's, I, I joke saying, I wish someone would complain about academics <laughs> sometimes because mm -hmm. really, we're such a sports oriented school and we have, we do have a lot of success. Right. People love to come to the games and watch us win and love that the history behind all of it. So there's such a balance, you know, have fun, but you have to help communication. Those parent meetings are so important. So, so important. And if there's a parent that's having a hard time, if you just let them vent, usually that's enough, you know, and make sure you include the coach and that it's, there's pressure. It's pressure to hire that good yeah. coach. You know, <laughs> yes, no tough. matter where you are, absolutely. And it's tough in a small town because they don't want to give up a high paying job to come coach. Rose absolutely. <laughs> Let's talk about the job. And I'm interested from your point of view, particularly you coming from the elementary. Uh, so you've been a principal at Manti for how many years now? Five. So five, five years. So in the five years that you've been there, and I want you to talk about your AD. So talk about the changes you've seen in athletic administration, because you as a principal know how important it is to have an AD that's on top of things. And you do have one in, in Susan, but I'm, and let's throw COVID out of it because COVID was a mess for everything. But just uh, since you've been the principal there, what are the changes you see in athletic administration? Wow. I mean, it is, it is a big undertaking. I mean, you just don't understand the register my coach, register my athlete, making sure that coaches are trained and mentored, making sure that parents understand the rules and the support the coach. And, and Susan teaches full time on top of this. So, you know, it, it's, there is so much to the position that I don't know how she does it. Well, she's amazing. That's how she does it. But we also, hired a secretary to help her take care of that, a full-time secretary to take care of all the secretarial things, you know, as far as checking grades and absolutely just don't know. Cause you have all those kids that have to be eligible. So you're checking grades all the time. You're checking attendance. You're, you're making sure that the games are set up, that they have water, that they have, you know, we don't have a, a athletic trainer. So Susan has, you know, she's there with the ice. She's there. Mm. It's just go, 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 go. And, there's just, I don't know how she does it. I'm just so impressed with that. And just talking to the district, you know, when we were trying to get that secretary, just letting them know how much the position has changed, how, how we even, we have, we gave her a, a prep period just to be an athletic director. And that wasn't enough because she needed that time to set up the ball games, make sure that referees were let into the building and to get their, you know, get changed into their ref, referee clothes and to make sure that they have water and then they have a treat and, 
it's just how to keep all that straight in your head. I mean, it's communication, communication, and it's a team effort. Honestly, it's a team effort. Like this week, she's going to be gone. And so Josh and I are going to handle the team meetings and Josh and I are going to go to the first soccer game. And so it's busy, busy. Perfect. Busy. Let's talk for a minute about your journey, your journey with the UIAAA. And I ask this because not all principals are as supportive of the Athletic Director Association as you've been. Obviously, you've been to our conference on numerous occasions. And if I could get all principals to, to support our organization like you do, I think our lives would be easier. But talk a little bit about how you found out about the UIAAA about attending some of the conferences and then obviously talk about uh, your award last year. Yeah. Oh yes. Um, Steve Roberts, who was our athletic director when I was hired, mentioned it to me. He, he just mentioned, you need to go to the law class, at least go to the law class so that you understand uh, the liabilities that we have. And so he signed me up and I loved it. It is such a great conference. The law class was amazing, mm. but everything else, the, you just don't know how to support your AD until you go to a conference like that and you hear and see the responsibilities that they have and what we can do to support that effort as well as supporting our students and making those decisions with what are best for students. Because you, you bring all that out in that conference. And I haven't missed a year. I go every year. I, I probably should let Josh go, but I really don't want to miss it. <laughs> so, well, yeah, yeah. And that's If you're the boss, you can go and he's got to stay and watch yeah. the school because Susan is going to be down there also. She is, and I, I just, it is so worth my time. You know, I, the, even if I'm not going to get certified, I love the classes. I love what I learn about all the different, um, like hydration for, for football. I mean, all that stuff is talked about. We have that connection with the high school association and how they work together with the UIAAA. And, and it's, it's just, information is powerful. And to go to that conference, you get so much you get information. It's amazing. And I just don't want to miss it. Thank you. Thank you for the PR and continue to, to attend. Let me ask you this. What's one, what's one common myth about being a principal at a smaller high school that you would like to debunk? <laughs> that, let's see. Um, the smaller, like, well, we work just as hard as all of them. In fact, probably it costs us more money for referees. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a, it's a, the travel is different. Everything is different. You know, when they say you have a small town school, but we have to prepare our, our students to leave school sooner, to go further distance, to play sports. Um, we have, we have 700 students, but we still have the same amount of need that they do. In fact, probably more need because we don't have all of the support from the city opportunities that they get. You know, we have to bring bring opportunities to them rather than taking just for the fact that transportation costs so much, you know, and um, it's busier because I don't have an assistant principal for every grade level. So we hmm. handle all students. We work with all students. We share the discipline responsibility. We share the celebration responsibility. Um, we share the opportunities to attend the games and activities. I also, we get the opportunity to know every single student. You know, we can stand in the lunchroom by the computer and, and just say hi to every student and learn their names. So that, that's awesome. That really is. That's a, that's great. And, and like elementary kids, if you know their name, so great. They're just little let, kids with big bodies. Yeah. Let me ask you this, because if, if my memory is correct, and of course I'm older, there are three high schools in, San Pete County, Gunnison, Manti, and North San Pete. Yes. Now, are are they? They're, is it North San Pete? Is its own district? Is that right? right. So they're they're separate, and so then Manti and Gunnison are in just San Pete district, or is it called South San Pete? South San Pete school district. Yeah, so we have two high schools in our in our small district. Three thousand students, approximately. So we're, we're the biggest. You're obviously the biggest, yeah. Gunnison's about half of our size. So and it's there. what, 20 miles to Gunnison? About 15. 15, 15 and, and you get all the uh, Ephraim kids. Ephraim, Manti, and Sterling. Okay. 
they pick up Gunnison, Fayette, Axtell. They, they get the rest of them. Okay, that's perfect. Well, uh, Karen, share with us what's the favorite part of your job being the principal? Oh, my word. The people, the students. I love, I love watching students grow and lead and learn. And I love to see them problem solve. It just, I love being among the people. I love building the capacity of, or helping, not, I don't get to build it, but help them build their capacity. I love the opportunities to cheer them on and celebrate, but also help them work through the tough. I love the fact that I can see them start and finish something that they started from ninth to 12th grade and, and celebrate them with a graduation. I, that, that All of that is so inspiring to me. I, I think it's just watching them become adults to move on into the world. And I love the challenge of trying to figure out a way to get these kids engaged. They're so different than they used to be. You know, back 40 years when I started, school was fun and they, they went because they wanted to learn. But now there's so many opportunities to learn outside the school that we have to change the way we deliver instruction that we have to make school a place where kids want to be. And you do that through connection, through activities, through sports, through uh, making them feel like that this is their school and that we're here to facilitate. You know, so I love the challenge of that. I love watching that happen. I watch, I love what, um, the new kids coming in and watching these little freshmen come in and they're so scared and they leave with all these wonderful accolades and experiences and, it's just so it's just so inspiring to me. I love it so much. Very well said. Thank you so much for sharing. We'll finish with a couple of items. The first being this, Karen. If I ask you for two suggestions for a brand new athletic administrator and they need to follow Karen's suggestions in order for them to become a success, what would your two suggestions be? Oh, communication, communication, communication. And, and and please remember that to ask for help doesn't it's not a weakness, it's a strength. So we're here for kids and it, we're here to make them successful and, and, and us as successful as administrators. And um, the other one would be to do what's do the important thing first. If you think about all the stuff that you have to do, you're gonna become overwhelmed and it's gonna be frustrating. But just take one thing at a time. Just organize yourself that Take care of one thing at a time and check out the list and go to the next thing. But don't overwhelm yourself with everything that you have to do because the job is huge. Huge but rewarding. Great suggestions. We'll finish on this. Karen, what questions should I have asked you that I failed to ask you? Um, I think you've done a good job. Good job. You asked me, you asked me great questions. You made me think. So I just... I just want you to know how much I appreciate what the UI AAA does for our schools and for our IDs and for our, our principals and for our sports in general. I think it's such a great organization and we feel the support. We do. We we feel like our, our ADs are trained. They, they, they have the support that they need. So thank you for all you do and for how you change athletics for the better. Well, those are kind words. And on that note, that wraps it up. For this edition of the UI AAA Connection. Again, our special guest today has been Karen Soper, the principal at Manti High School. Karen, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Thank you for the invitation. It's been fun talking to you. For our listeners, we hope you tune in again next week for another edition of the UI AAA Connection. <laughs>